Today we're joined by the CEO of PainCheck, uh, Mr. Philip Daffis. PainCheck, ASX code PCK, is the developer of the world's first smartphone-based pain assessment and monitoring application. Uh, yesterday, uh, Philip, uh, PainCheck announced to the market it had received CE Mark and TGA clearance for PainCheck. Now, in simple terms, can you highlight what this means and why it's important for PainCheck? Well, thank you, Tim. And well, to, to start with, it's very imp important to sort of point out that PainCheck's been CE Mark, which is European regulatory clearance and TGA clearance for, for Australia and New Zealand for the past four years. Um, but it's been, we've been cleared uh, for our, our original version of the product, which is the PainCheck app. This is the, this is the app for people who can't verbalize their pain. And we use the technology, including AI, to assess assess their, the pain levels for these people through the pain check version. What we've done now is because through to, to client demand, people said, we love pain check, we love the app, we love the fact that it can, it can assess pain for those residents or those patients who can't verbalize pain, but we wanna use it for all our patients or all our residents. And of course, m some can't verbalize their pain and some can self-report their pain. So what we've done now is we've added in the numeric rating scale to the PainCheck app system um, to, to allow us to assess pain for all people in every situation. And now that's been given clearance by the European regulators, which includes the UK, and by the Australian regulator as a, as a medical device. Now, Philip, in, in the announcement, uh, you stated that PainCheck Universal will also generate significant additional data on pain assessment outcomes. Why is this data so important and, and can, how do you plan to monetize this data? Well, the data is incredibly important because you know we've already got more than 300,000 documented clinical pain assessments through the work that we've done so far or the, or the assessments we've done so far in Australia, in the UK, Singapore, and New Zealand. So we've got 300,000 assessments um, in, our, in our database and in our portal. What that currently allows is it allows our clients to look at their pain data and their pain management data to optimize care. And what it means for us is that we can actually look at pain trends and look at how we continue to improve the artificial intelligence and the assessment of pain, pain with, with, our, with our technology and therefore look at improvements. The universal product now would rapidly expand that database, which is, I would say, it's the largest pain database in the world. Um, it would rapidly expand it because we're going to be targeting significantly more people. Um, and as we roll this out into, into broader Europe and eventually into the United States, we will have a database which, which is really significant. And it can also lead to insights that will allow us to work with therapeutic companies, that's drug companies who develop pain medications to build what we call a, a diagnostic and therapeutic collaboration. So we can be diagnosing uh, pain levels, they can be treated through therapeutics, and then we can monitor the effect of those therapeutics subsequently. So a true, they call it theranostic uh, solution, which would be totally unique in the worldwide market. Philip, you mentioned uh, European approval with the CE mark, and of course, uh, approval here in Australia. Can you give us some more detail and timeframes around your FDA submission? Well, good, good question, good timing. We, 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 did, we did wait a long time for the FDA to come back to us on our pre-sub supplement. That's, that's basically where, where we put in a proposed clinical study that would, that if conducted and the results were correct, would give, lead us to FDA clearance. We, we, we gave them the study protocol more than a year ago. Unfortunately, due to COVID, they got totally wiped out in terms of support doing anything outside of COVID-19. Um, but as of last month, we've actually got the response from the FDA on our, clinic, our proposed clinical study. Um, it's, there, there, are some, some, there, are, there are some feedback they've given us, which we need to review and reflect on. There's nothing significant, but what we've done is we've organized a meeting with them before the end of this month, before the end of March, to go, to go through their comments, to finalize what they're looking for. And then, then we should start our clinical study during 2021. We estimate we can complete the study by 2021, submit in to the FDA by the end of this year, early next year, and therefore look for FDA clearance for the US market by the end of 2022. What I would add is that if you look at our current clearances, for we've got Europe, Canada, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand, 
Um, that covers more than 40% of the world's market. Adding the US will take us to more than 70% of the global market. So that's a significant, we've already made a significant achievement where we are so far. Adding the US would, would make us a truly global op operator. Um, Philip, you obviously have significant clearance, as you mentioned just then, around the globe, around 40% of the market. Can you, can you give us um, uh, more details in regards to the commercial opportunity? It's interesting because, you know, we are in aged care right now and aged care we've already assessed as being a $300 million global market opportunity. So having access to Europe, um, Australia, New Zealand, um, UK, Singapore and Canada already gives us access to 40% of that. Getting the US as well give us 70% of that. So that's a $300 million market opportunity of which we penetrated $3 million so far. So we've just penetrated 1% of the global market opportunity. So, so that's one segment. Um, and as you can see, it's a large segment. The other areas we're focusing on, though, are even larger markets. You know, pain assessment is not just in aged care, it's actually needed in home care, which is growing significantly as the population ages, and hospitals, where there are a significant number of people living with dementia who enter hospitals, and where pain is, is a mandatory requirement in terms of testing. We estimate the home care market is worth in the region of a billion dollars per annum, as well as the, as the as, as home care market is a billion dollars, as well as the hospital market being about a billion dollars. So combining, that's close to two and a half billion dollars per annum market opportunity, of which you really right now just scratch the surface. So, so, so very significant. Philip, of course, you've also got a, a version of the app for children. Can you uh, give us a sense of the market there? Well, that's interesting because I mentioned some very big markets for the adult version of the app, but the children's market actually is, in terms of numbers of children, there's 400 million children a year, pre-verbal children in the market at any one time globally, of which about 100 million are born each year to first-time parents. Um, those numbers actually, you know, dwarf the, the dementia numbers globally. So we've just completed the first version of our kids app, um, this is actually is going to be totally unique in the sense that you just run a three second video of a child's face, that's, a, that's an infant's face from age of zero to one, and after three seconds the app will tell you the severity of pain on that child and that child based upon a procedural pain comparison. So this, this, is, this is brand new, we've finished the clinical study work, we've validated the product, we're doing peer-reviewed publications now, um, and we're just going through the regulatory process again for CE mark for, for, for Europe, including the UK, and also TGA for, for Australia. So we're, we're looking to get the clearance by June this year and therefore be able to market the product initially to hospitals, to paediatric wards, paediatricians, nursing, nursing care environments um, in the first instance. And then once we've settled it with the healthcare professionals, we see the big opportunity with mums and dads at home um, because this is where the care is really needed. And then mums and dads at home already have things like thermometers at home to, to measure fever for their children. Having pain, having pain check as a pain assessment tool as well will mean they can assess the two most important signs they're looking for with kids. One is fever, which they can do with the thermometer, and one is pain, which they could do with pain check. And that's a 100 million, 100 million new parents per annum market opportunity. Philip Daffis, thanks for your time. Pleasure. Thank you, Tim.